All right, up next to the stage is Richard Woody. Richard, there you are. Hey. Beards. Because if you think I have a jawline, who am I to tell you otherwise? <laughs> Cafe Diem, you're looking good tonight. Give yourselves a round of applause. Let's hear it for you. Actually, this doesn't even look like Cafe Diem tonight. It looks like a place where like people go to. <laughs> I'm saying it looks good tonight. All right. No, where are my fat guys at tonight? So a health conscious crowd is what we have here tonight. Congratulations to you. Where are my ladies who enjoy the fat guys? I'm gonna remember that face. Oh, nice. I feel that I am like in a weird position because I am by no means a skinny man. But I'm not a huge dude either. I'm what I like to call Jessica Simpson fat. Because it's like, you know I'm fat, but you know I shouldn't be. My things would just be a lot better if they ate a salad or walked somewhere. It's kind of like being a mixed child because I feel like I don't really belong anywhere and I'm equally hated by both. I can't talk to fat girls because they look at me and are like, you know, maybe if you ate another chocolate covered chili cheese pork conch, we'd talk slim. <laughs> I can't talk to the skinny girls because they lie to me and tell me they only date black dudes. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> and now we do too. But, I don't know, women confuse me a little bit, every now and then. Like, like, sir, does she ask you questions that confuse you from time to time? Sure. Thank you. That, I know. They do. Because, I was talking to a girl once and she, I, she asked me if I had any turn-ons. I was like, could you give me an example so I know what you're talking about? She said, yeah. I had, used to date this guy where he would do this thing and he would put his tongue behind my ear. And it would just drive me nuts. Does that, do you like that? Yeah. You, you see, it works for you too. After she gave me the example, I thought to myself, okay, yeah, I have one of those. Because I used to date this girl, and stick with me on this one. She would do this thing where she would put her vagina on my penis. And go all the way down. Sometimes for minutes at a time, it was amazing. Ladies, you should look into that. But I don't know. And, but the good news is that, I don't know if you heard this, but insurance companies have toyed with the idea of coming out with new dating sites. Because it, it kind of makes sense if you think about it, because what's the point in having an insured home if you don't have an insured love to go with it? That's why here at GEICO, we provide many different dating opportunities. We can provide you with a girl that you can take home to mom, or a girl so easy a caveman could do her. And of course, you're going to get competition from other insurance agencies like uh, ASFLAC. And as always, with Allstate, your penis is in good hands. <laughs> and you're also well protected from STDs like him. <laughs> that would joke require me to point to a random person in the audience and you just go, he doesn't have an STD, ladies and gentlemen. It's not true. <laughs> it, But I don't know, I was, I was a little depressed today because I started thinking about being single. And it made me think, you know, the worst part about being single is just looking back on that regret. How many of you, by a show of hands, have the one who got away? Seriously, you're killing me. So two people. All right, so you know what I'm talking about, the one that got away. And, you know, because you think about it, and like it's your fault that you didn't get them because I had a girl who was interested in me. She was, you know, all about it. She loved you know, blowjobs, she was into anal. I'm pretty sure I could have convinced her to get into a threesome. And I thought in my mind, I can do better. 
Now you are with me when I realize that my left hand has a name and it is apparently better. <laughs> and that is my life regret. Thank you, Cafe Diem. That is my time. Give it up again for Richard Woody. Uh, just a quick comment, ma'am. I saw you laughing at that black joke, and I'm only, I turned 21 like Friday. So, yeah. if you want, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm not that young. Uh, up next on the stage is Brett Leak. All right. Coming up next to the stage is the, where did you go? Andy Tran. Andy, hey, there you go. Give it for Andy Tran. How are you guys doing? You're probably really not used to an Asian guy speaking like that, right? Yeah. I used to be one of those guys in the back of the class. I was in remedial math, though. Do you know how much that fucking sucked? So all the kids were like, this guy's so smart because he's Asian. I'm like, no, I'm like the dumbest out of them. <laughs> okay, that was a new joke. Anyways, today, so uh, I went to the gym, you know? Love fucking lifting weights. But today, I wasn't lifting weights. I went to yoga. Yoga was fucking brilliant. Um, I went in there and I saw the hot girl for my group therapy session because I got problems. I mean, everybody has problems, but I got problems. So I went in there, you know, she's like smiling at me, winking. And you know, the ambience is just getting all chill, the yoga music. Oh, it's like bringing me back to my motherland. I'm like, oh, okay, I like this shit. And so I'm just sitting down next to her, trying to be all slick. I'm like, hey, what's up, Mary? She's like, oh, hey. So I close my eyes, because everybody's closing their eyes, doing their little yoga stance, like. And then I hear a And I look to the side, and Mary's squinting her nose, because the girl in front of her is doing downward dog, and she sharded her pants. So I don't like girls in yoga pants anymore because of that reason. Later on, I played basketball because I'm at the West Cary Street Gym. Yeah. I know, right? So I go out on the court and there's this kid, this pimply little ginger kid, and he comes up to me and says, hey, Jeremy Lin, hey, Jeremy Lin. So I go to say to him, hey, I'm not Jeremy Lin. I'm his cousin. <laughs> and so we're playing basketball, right? And I'm guarding him, and he goes up for a layup. So I jump, and I smack the shit out the ball with this crouching tiger, hidden dragon type of shit. And he falls on his ass, he's like, Ugh. I'm like, yeah. So I walk up to him, my balls are hanging over his face, and I say, I'm not Jeremy Lin's cousin, I'm Andy, how are you doing? <laughs> so I pick his ass up, and then he's like, dude, you're talking so much shit. You're just talking so much shit. So I was saying like, yeah, uh, just give me a roll of toilet paper. I'll put it in my mouth and I'll chew it. Now all I do is speak is charm. And he didn't know what to say to that. He was like, okay, Andy. Ah, oh, man. When I was a kid, you know what I wanted to be? I wanted to be a fucking rapper. Oh my God, how I loved rapping. Hip hop was so fucking tight. Cause I could relate to, you know, all the, the killing and the money and all that shit. <laughs> so I got a rap for my comics out there, my aspiring comics and my veteran comics, okay? What up, I'm Andy, I'm a comic. I don't drop bombs, Islamic. I'm just kidding. I'm talking about America, Atomic. What the fuck am I doing? I'm fucking rapping. Yo, dude, is that your girlfriend? Nope, well, let me text her. 
I might kill the pussy. Call the shit Dexter. All right, so I'm done with that. I, were, I really wasn't going to go anywhere with my rapping profession. But besides liking rapping music, I really enjoy Christian music. You know what I mean? But, you know, I'm a weird kind of Christian guy because I love fucking and I love drinking. So it doesn't really go well with the, uh, the religion. Don't tell my pastor that. And so the kind of Christian music I'm making is Christian dubstep music. So, my friend's a musician, and of course, I, Andy, I'm the fucking artist, of course. And so he's on his MIDI keyboard, and he's doing... He's not the best producer, obviously. But then I'll do my little lyrics, and I'll be like, God, 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 Jesus, God, God, God. Kill the devil. <laughs> We might drop an EP later, be famous, so maybe one of you girls should fuck me tonight or something. Ah <laughs> oh, man, I love going to church after doing pie and being hungover in church. It's the weirdest fucking thing. Because I like hooked up with my first MILF at the National, the weirdest fucking thing. And so it's like I'm sitting in the pew, like thinking about, oh man, I was with that MILF. And like, this one time, this tithing bag, it's where you put the donations in, it was passed to me, and I was fumbling with my wallet, and my condom fell in, and put a tithing bag. And so this like voluptuous brunette is looking at me, and I'm looking at her, we both look at the bag, and I'm thinking, what do I do? So I just say to her, you know what? God died for me on the cross, and he gave me protection. So I'm going to return him the favor and pay him back with my own protection. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Give it up for Andy Tram, a great rapper. Much better than Lil Wayne. Okay. Uh, next up coming to the stage is a very funny guy, regular at the Funny Bone. Give it up for Jesse Thomas. All right, up next, the next comic is Greg Ackerman. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Ackerman, actually. Nice try. <clears throat> Can you hear me back there? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I was actually really psyched. Uh, I was really psyched before the show because. Um, I got a really good score on my SAT practice test, um, yeah, um, which is sort of sad because that was the only thing I was really psyched about. Um, wow, funny how your first joke gives away your religion. Uh, <laughs> so I'm either, I'm either Indian or Chinese, so I don't know. Um, no, I'm, I'm actually Jewish. I've never really been religious. Um, I actually think God is gay. He just sort of... Um, threw the scent off the gay trail by adding that stuff in. Because think about it, okay? He knows that the Jewish people are going to be persecuted because they collect everyone's taxes and, you know, they fuck all their daughters. Um, I mean, the black people do it too, but really. <laughs> they were persecuted too, you know? So, <laughs> it's okay. Um, so I, um, wow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, he knows that Jewish people don't like to be so lonely. Um, and Jewish people and black people aren't really integrated into society at the same time, you know, not until Oprah says it. Um, so, uh, you know, he need, they need some company in prison. So, you know, <laughs> they add the gay people. Um, no, I'm proud of being the first, first people to take it up the ass. That's right. Um, <laughs> No, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you how I know God is really gay, though, okay? Because if I had the opportunity to fuck a girl named Mary, like, actually do her, not implant the seed, actually, like, fuck a girl named Mary, I would do it. I wouldn't care about some sci-fi Jewish kid who, who I would produce out of that. I would, I would do it, man. Because think about it. If you get to say, oh, Mary, oh, Mary, like you're some 30s porn star, I mean, I'd father the kid. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what about you? But... Um, no, talk about sci-fi. Um, I, I was in leadership class, and this nerd 
uh, decides to bring up Darth Vader. He's like, yeah, I think Darth Vader was a great leader. Um, you know, he, he united the Death Star. I don't know, I've never watched Gossip Girl. Um, <laughs> no, but um, he said that. I, the only reason I'm telling this joke is because he shot himself like a week later, so I feel bad. Um, no, you would have seen it in the news. He didn't shoot himself. Uh, but he's in juvie, so same thing. Um, <laughs> no, uh, so I, I, I thought that was a bit ridiculous. So this is what I said. I said, you know what? If Darth Vader was really such a good leader, maybe he would have stopped by CVS to buy some fucking cough drops. I mean, seriously? Like, that man sounds like Stephen Hawking's orgasm. Seriously. So think about it. <sighs> Press the red button. I mean, it's not, even, it's not even like it's weird, but it's a social issue, too. Like, you can't be sarcastic. Like, think about it. Uh, uh, the, the red button, sir? No. The pink button with glittery squirrels. Uh, yeah, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, what next? Oh yeah, that's right. I went to a black school for two years. A um, lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, I, the, the, the big difference I found between black kids and white kids was that you tell a white kid that you've got big balls and he's just like, dude. Like, he doesn't even make up a sentence. He doesn't have anything to say. He's just, you're different, you're weird. Uh, but a black kid would be like, oh, okay, swag. <laughs> like, like, to me, that's an idea, at least. Um, and then black... <laughs> black girls, for me, I, I, I really enjoyed, uh, because they always, they always laughed. I, like, I told, you know, the big balls. Um, and they're like, oh, <laughs> he say he got big balls. So, <laughs> I, like, <laughs> like, I know what I said. And then a white girl was like, uh-huh. Yeah, you have big balls. Oh, gosh. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to end up on a Muslim joke. Um, so, <laughs> I have family in Israel. I, um, so my favorite class is leadership class, uh, or as I like to call it, uh, make the Middle Eastern girl feel like shit for 45 minutes. Uh, <laughs> have a good night, guys. <laughs>